The ascension of UConn football to Division 1A has been a huge hit in the nutmeg state. Sellout crowds have become the norm at beautiful new Rentschler Field. And another full house will be on hand tonight for the first ever meeting on the gridiron between the Pittsburgh Panthers and the Connecticut Huskies tonight on ESPN2. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Craig James. Delighted to have you with us. The folks here in Connecticut delighted with their football program in just their third year in Division 1A. They've won 16 of their last 20 games, and, Craig, they're led by one of the best quarterbacks in the country. When you look at Orlovsky's numbers, Dan Orlovsky's one of those guys who just say, who is this guy? But when you talk about his skills on the football field, look what he's done compared to Matt Leinart and Jason White. In what has become known as a hostile environment here at Rutschler Field, guys. It is indeed these fans known for getting loud this year. Look at how far off Rivas 25 is, the true freshman. He's talented, yes, but you can't give that much room to a good quarterback-receiver combination. And they're going to put the pressure on him. I'd go after Rivas. I'd find out, okay, can you deal with the pressure of a game under the lights on TV? This is a basketball crazy state, but they've come to love college football as well. Just two years ago, they sold 4,000 season tickets for football. This year, 28,000 in their new stadium. And they're making plenty of noise with Pittsburgh starting at its own two-yard line. Raymond Kirkley just trying to get them out from the goal line. Well, they're going to have to get the running game going. There's no question about it. But right now, Pittsburgh's getting beat up front. Two tight ends in the game. Kirkley the lone back behind Tyler Palco. His pass intercepted. Touchdown, Justin Perkins. Rival, perhaps it'll be Pittsburgh. Farman can't get outside. Great play by Alfred Fincher, the senior from Norwood, Massachusetts. That's called filling the lane there. Fincher used his speed. He was like a ball carrier on defense, went to where the hole was going to be. Talking about explosive. I mean, there he is in the middle of the field, middle linebacker, number nine. See, he gets above and in front of the block. He gets right to the lane. Seven, and the Panthers have the ball again in poor field position starting at their own six yard line. Game track brought to you by KFC. And flags, a couple of them before the snap of the football. Might have been some movement along that offensive line. Right in the snap, ball start, 62 offense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Randy Edsel and, and the Connecticut football team has really asked their fans to get after it at the games. Bang and beat and make noise. And in this end zone right here, behind them, I mean, they're beating the wall. I mean, and that caused the false start. It works for their team. Now, the students at that end, this is not an on-campus facility. It's about 20 minutes from their campus and stores. Between the campus and downtown Hartford. With plenty of students here tonight. Furman was tackled by Tyler King. This is very much a pro atmosphere, if you will. In Connecticut, a well-populated state. We're just outside downtown Hartford. Really, there are no pro teams here. There's minor league sports, but Connecticut is it in this state. And they have really taken to the football program as they have the men's and women's basketball that have won national championships in recent years. Connecticut is it in this state. You got that right. Yeah, Connecticut University of Connecticut. <laughs> and moved it again. Well, they used to have the Hartford Whalers. A lot of us missed the whale. Uh -huh. Moved on to Carolina. Five and a step. Well, well, those sorry. fans are having an effect. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still second down. In fact, when Connecticut beat Duke here a few weeks ago, Duke missed a last-second field goal they would have wanted, and Randy Edsel credited the crowd in part for the missed field goals. And the deafening noise certainly seemed to have an effect. Connecticut players appreciate the help. They get it off. Palco in trouble in the end zone. Throws it away. And if that's grounding in the end zone and they're looking at each other are the officials. And no flags. John Main was putting the heat on. That could have been called a safety. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that one there, 
He went right to the linesman to find out what you think. Was it in the area there, receiver? The ball was just real high. Third down and 14. And Coach Harris is looking for a play from his inexperienced offense in their first road game. By far the toughest environment they faced so far tonight. Falco goes out of the gun. They have quick kicked a couple of times this year. And again, problems with the snap, and this time a delay of game penalty. It's not a very big distance at this juncture as they keep backing up closer and closer to the goal line. It, you know, I took my headset off in the midst of that series right there of things, and you can tell that Palco's asking for the ball, and, and most teams now from this point forward who studied the Connecticut team will know they've got to go silent snap when they come here. Marcus Furman managed to get out of the end zone, and he gets shoved ahead to the four-yard line. Marcus Lloyd made the tackle. Credit those fans in that end zone. So loud that the center, Malarski, could not hear Palco when he was calling for the ball out of the shotgun, and Walt Harris is chatting with the senior center, Justin Malarski, about just that. If they can survive this end of the field until halftime, they'll have to make an adjustment at halftime with their offensive unit on a silent count and change up. Shotgun will not be an option for them down there. And the thumping they took in that ground game last year. Third down and long. They need the 30-yard line. Palco is going to try to run for it. He won't make it. Fincher ran him down from behind. James Hargrave also there, but it was Fincher who made the primary play. And the Panthers will punt again. If you have any question or not whether number nine Fincher can play, 6'1, 240, don't worry about it. The guy can play. He can run. He looks like one of those Miami Hurricanes linebackers that's not a huge guy but can run. Erlovsky's from Shelton, Connecticut, just outside Bridgeport. Highly recruited Connecticut High School State Player of the Year as a senior. Had the chance to go to Purdue or Michigan State, University of Virginia, among others. But Goes to be the guy, really, that highly touted recruit, the first to go to the in-state university as they make the move up to Division 1A, hoping others would follow. They have. He's flying overhead with his eye in the sky. Under a minute to go in the first half. Tightly played throughout. The big play up coming here for Pittsburgh. They're looking at third down from the 12-yard line. Third down and goal for Palco against Randy Edsel's defense. This stadium has the best rock and roll sound system in America. It's brand new. <laughs> Tyvon Branch, he can fly. We mentioned the New York State champion in the 100 and 200 meters and the national high school champion out of Cicero North Syracuse High School. I mentioned this is a pro-type atmosphere. Newsy was booed during the introduction of the starting lineups. Tough crowd. At Rensselaer Field. Oh, man. That is long enough. It is good. They're not booing him now. <laughs> you never know, big boy. <laughs> so great momentum for Connecticut as they head off. Walt Tyler Pelko under center, first and 10 from his own 15-yard line. He was 5 for 15 in the first half, but did throw the 77-yard touchdown pass. Kirkley dumped immediately by Alfred Fincher. Number of NFL scouts here. And I talked to a couple at the half, and the man they were talking most about was that man you just circled, Craig, Alfred Fincher. You see the center trying to combo 68 to come off on Fincher. He gets hung up with the right guard. Defensive tackle did his job, kept the linebacker free, and Fincher just sucks him up, man. Ball carriers, he's finding him and putting the wood to him. Palco running out of time, and he is sacked. 
for the first time tonight. Sean Main and Tyler King in on the sack. See if they play conservatively again here. Back up to their own end zone. No, they don't. Palco forced to run, and he won't get far. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. It's Fincher again. He's demonstrated his terrific speed all night in the game for Pittsburgh. Boom. Nick Crutt with the punt. And it's a pretty good one. But Larry Taylor finds an opening, and he's back to the 31-yard line. Number 24, Larry Taylor. Connecticut hasn't been very good on special teams. They're playing a lot of freshmen with speed, trying to make some plays, and Taylor made one. The fill-in punter kicked at 49, but Taylor brought it back 28. Yeah, not much hang time there, and Taylor, nice job running. No mystery wonderland on this one here. Fields it cleanly, and you can see why they have him back there. He's got a lot of talent. A lot of quickness, a lot of shift to him. Three wide receivers, Cornell Brockington, the running back. They give it to Brockington through a big hole, first down across the 20. A nice job on that kick. Fruits a freshman from Clark Summit, PA. Orlovsky after a good fake as a man wide open. Jason Williams inside the five and down at the four. Sean McDonough, Craig James, Heather Cox back at sold out Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut, the new home of the Connecticut Huskies in its second year as home of the football program. Still the newest stadium in Division I A football. Nobody built the new one that opened this year. So this still has the distinction. A nice announcer's booth, plenty of room to walk around. This is NFL caliber, right? A big. Swing to the formation to the right. He tried to cut it back left and couldn't get outside. It's Tyler King again. Well, you and I have talked to a lot of players over the years preparing for these games. I'm not sure I've ever met anybody as intense 24 hours before a game as Tyler King. Second down and goal. Orlovsky, touchdown, Karan Henry. And Connecticut goes back on top. At least that's... That's the story, and you're like me and Fish for just 69 yards as a team. Palco, a design run, it appeared. Oh. Oh. His head oh, snapped back. He's lost the football at the 20-yard line. Alan Barnes laid the wood on him. And the Huskies have recovered the fumble. Well, that's the risk you take when you have a design run for the quarterback. You expose him to taking a shot, and he took a shot. And I think Tyler King recovered the fumble after Barnes walloped Pelko. He oh. just lost his footing, and he, so he, therefore he lost everything. And, and Fincher pulled it up. Fincher was one in number nine. Yeah, he held on to the ball after that big hit. It was Fincher with the strip. Second guy comes in, tries to strip. It's taught every huge turnover when it looked like Pittsburgh was driving to at least get within a field goal, if not take the lead. Now Brockington escapes across midfield and knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Pittsburgh. A 35-yard run. You know, big play right after you get the turnover. Watch the left guard. Watch how he walls it off. Look at the turn. This is a beautiful job of blocking. Finds the linebacker, pushes him out, loses lane containment, assignment on defense, and Brockington shows you vision and a little speed. 